Hello and welcome to another episode of Shuffling Notes, where we discuss albums, artists, songs, and all things music. I'm your co-host, Prankit. And I'm your co-host, Razi. And today we will be discussing a band, a rock band from Chicago called Alkaline Trio, and more specifically their album, Disaddiction, which came out in February 2010. So, Razi, uh, have you ever heard of this band before, you know, listening for this episode? So I was going to, uh, in um, in between this period, I was going to mention it to you that I do have this album since we were searching for it, since it's not available on Apple Music in India. Oh, yeah, the, it's, it's a very even, difficult album even to on down Spotify, in India, yeah. apparently. Um, yeah. But... I finally found it on YouTube, but um, so I I also found it in my music library because sometime yeah. some years ago uh, I had transferred oh. all your music to my library. Oh, and I, I see. it was there. So uh, I mean, so that's why I I had uh, first heard this or read this name uh, in my library years ago, but I never never got around to listening to it. This but, must have been back in like the iTunes days, right? When we had the iTunes library. Because yeah. right. it's Alkaline Trio, right? So that's that's the first, that's yeah. A that comes up. So uh, uh-huh. it was that. Yeah, I mean, it is. Even for me, it takes me back. I haven't heard this music for a while now. Um, but because, you know, we, we were going through a lot of these sort of uh, rock and even punk rock bands, um, I was like, I have to do Alkaline Trio. <laughs> And uh, I mean, this addiction for me is one of my sort of favorite albums from them. So I was introduced to them by they did another album called Crimson before this. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it was like two albums before this uh, that and had this song called Mercy Me. And I love that song. Um, and that's how I sort of started getting into their music. But I think at the time when I heard that song, it was like 2010 and this album had just come out. So mm-hmm. I immediately jumped to their current music. And when I heard this album, like it was one of my favorites to this day for specific reasons. And I think we'll, we'll get into it as, as sort of we, we dive into it. Um, but it's a bit of background. So uh, Alkaline Trio, it's three people, you know, surprise. <laughs> um, the lineup has gone through some changes, but in, in this album, it's uh, composed of uh, Matt Ski, but I don't know how to pronounce his uh, second name actually. But he's uh, guitar and lead vocals generally. Uh, then we've got Dan, who is a uh, bass, and he's he's sort of backup vocals on some of the tracks. He is lead. He's vocals. also lead vocals. And yeah. then we have Derek. Yeah, and then we have Derek Grant, who is drums. But again, he's done vocals. I think on at least one of the tracks uh, in this in this album. But I think you know generally, in in if you look at interviews and and what what the band has said about this album, they'll say like they've come up together. Like everyone has sort of equally contributed to the whole songwriting process. Um, but they've, def- they've sort of, uh, they've defined this album as like a thinking man's punk, mm-hmm. which is, I think, very interesting. And I think I'll get into it as I go, because that's also how I've kind of felt about it. Um, but what they've said was, you know, we wanted to do something that's fun, but also interesting and lyrically something that will be fun for people to read along and hopefully understand. So there's like slightly deeper meanings, you know, when it, when it gets to lyrics. Um, right. But it, it's a very unique style they have. I mean, you know, punk rock generally, there's a sound to it. And oftentimes, and, you know, maybe uh, it's incorrect, but people sometimes, you know, mistakenly think punk rock is just about, you know, trivial things, right? Heartbreak or, you know, like rebelling. Um, but I think sometimes, you know, some bands and some lyrics, they just go beyond that. They'll, and I think this is a very good example where a lot of the songs on surface level, I think, are about those, you could say, trivial things. Mm-hmm. But the lyrics go deeper. And I think, you know, we'll, we'll dive into it as we go. Um, but I just thought it was quite appropriate that that's how they also define this album. Yeah, um, I mean... But uh, yeah. Um, my, so on my, my take on this was, uh, it was very... Uh, it was unusual music, um, not because I'm not into punk rock. Uh, well, I'm not really into punk rock, but um, <laughs> just saying um, that 
it was the I this album specifically, or maybe as I read, even other people mentioned that this album was specifically smoother than other album of theirs. Like other albums are quite more sort of mm-hmm. out there punk rock kind of feeling, but yeah. this was more. Well, one of the things in this album is, and it could be maybe maybe that contributes to this a uh, smoother sound that you're saying. Is yeah. that the the way they approach this album is they wanted it to sound sort of more simple and and what that means is uh, they wanted it to be something they can easily play live so it doesn't have a lot of effects like mm-hmm. there're not too many guitars being overdubbed over guitars right mm-hmm. it's not like there's ten guitar tracks yeah. playing uh, and I think that might contribute to that simpler sound because it sounds like how it would sound when they play live it wouldn't mm-hmm. necessarily be missing a lot of the instruments because you know sometimes when you have rock bands and you hear an album and they have, the, you know, it sounds amazing and they'll have a plethora of like instruments and they'll have multiple guitar tracks overdubbed. But when you listen to them live, it, it's kind of missing that because they don't have enough band members to be playing all the instruments. Um, so I think that was one of the things they were going for. And I think maybe that's what you're hitting on, hitting on a little bit. Maybe. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not w- very well aware with the previous albums. So. I mean, it's it's just really? something I felt well, like. Now I'll make I, it my mission that you become yeah. So so I, I went through the album probably once or twice, and yeah. then I started looking into oh, a little a little research here and there, which sort of showed oh. that people oh, have oh, research? Sort of mixed reaction. <laughs> Um, (laughs) some people loved it some people um, didn't like it as much because it was unusual Mm -hmm. of their music and um, yeah it was this album was a bit different from their general sound right so so yeah that's exactly what people said and uh, so that's what uh, this album had I don't know uh, I I had I have a love hate thing for the album because <laughs> oh wow okay cause, yeah yeah because yeah. uh, there are some songs which are there on my mind like if I'm if I'm trying yeah. to get out of a song of another song uh, yeah there's there's a tune that I remember of well specifically dying, 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 my yeah yeah yep and uh, so books. other others like that so um. There are a few, and so some of the okay. songs have, or I think nearly all of them have this section mm-hmm. in them which is so good to hook on, like it's mm-hmm. it, it's either a guitar riff or it's catchy. It's, it's I mean, yeah. I, nearly all of them have a section which is the yeah which you can rate as the well catchiest. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, that. Uh, so, I mean, but, but it's a long album, first of all. Like, I must say, it is. It's, it's, well, it we'll, took me we'll get into, I think originally the album only had like eleven tracks. It's because mm-hmm. we're listening to the deluxe version that it has all the extra ta- tracks. Um, but no, I'm actually yeah, I'm actually now look, really looking forward to diving into it track by track to see like what your what your reactions were to the different songs. Um, but I guess one more thing to mention before we dive into it was initially the title of this album was going to be called Seven. Um, okay. I don't know why, but they were going to go with that name. But they ended up using Seven because they released the single and it was released as, you know, like when a single is released, it's almost like a separate album, right? Mm-hmm. So they released it under the name Seven in terms mm-hmm. of like what that album was called. called. And then they also, there's a music video um, for one of the songs and they used the uh, seven as like they're wearing like shirts with that seven logo on it so for some reason they really liked seven um, but they ended up with going with disaddiction because I think that stuck with like the theme of what this album is I think as we dive in many dive of the it. songs so, and uh, the theme of the songs yeah yeah, uh, yeah sure I, I, I agree with that yeah, well, talk, talk, well, talking about the title of the album then, right? We, we dive into the first track, <laughs> This Addiction. Uh, and, you know, before, you know, I've got a bit of a quote from, uh, uh, from Matt here. So what he said was like, it's the first song on the record and the title of the new album, a new at the time, I suppose. 
uh, and the song takes heroin addiction as a metaphor for love. The whole record is really personal. All three of us have been through quite a bit since our last album, and it is all expressed through this. <laughs> all the songs are about the relationship we've been in, and so the record is has that constant theme. Yeah, I think you know. Uh, I think this is probably the most like fast paced song uh, in this album. Um, I think Alkaline Trio in general, some of the earlier songs were really fast paced. So I think this has that sort of callback, but it's super fast. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd be I'd be interested into hearing what your thoughts about the song were before I dive too deep. I mean, first of all, it it starts in that. I mean, this is the song which tells you it's a punk rock band and this mm -hmm. is a punk rock album and um yeah then once the once the vocals start the song that's when that's when i had a different perception of the album completely like i'm i'm talking about of my first listen and um i mean the song the the details of the song we discussed but that's that's just what the music so um, in the musical way it sort of put me in the zone that uh first I, okay it's a punk rock song uh, I, you know it's there's a punk rock riff that they all play it's it's the same oh immediately off the bat it's like yeah. okay you get that and, 2000s feel <laughs> and um then well then the lyrics kick in and the I think it's it's the voice of whoever is singing this song. Um, Matt, it's yeah. however it's produced, it's produced differently. Like and for that's that's in for a lot of songs. Like the voice has sort of uh, not modulated but produced differently. Like the singing, the singing quite normally, but yeah. but uh, they have a you know a different. Um, Maybe maybe an echo attached to it or or something like that, but it's, there's a uniqueness to it. Yes, there's another song which where the uh, sort of voice stands out, but we we'll get there. Um, about the song, it's yeah. uh, what my perspective was was that it's it's to someone uh, while the person's also feeling sick without them, so maybe he's wanting You're them back or, and and then you know there's there's lots of interpretations that you can take in because yeah because i mean i the think the song, main one being it's like there's yeah the song never mentions like you know that this addiction is this addiction is there is all that the song mentioned but it doesn't mention the situation yeah of when yeah. this when this addiction is happening so you can't tell whether mm -hmm. you know they're trying to get back. As in, like if so it's like, like after a breakup, or if it's like the backstory. Yeah, yeah. Like is if it it's for like... the girl, uh, you know, to to uh, yeah, yeah. sort things out, or for the girl in a romantic yeah. way, or that? I mean, there are there are three four ways that you could put. The it song into. is purely just about the addiction, but it doesn't. There's no context to like exactly what the larger exactly. picture is, right? Is this like post breakup, or is this something else? Um. So yeah, I mean, I think you know it uses like a, a like a, I think methadone and and heroin, and it sort of compares the two. And I don't know enough about these two drugs to to really like understand. But I think from from this song, what I understand is that is that heroin hits you super hard, mm -hmm. while methadone is something that you take daily and maybe gets you through the day, but it's not like that hard hit. Because I think it compares like you know those other girls were like methadone. But like having you, I can't remember the exact words where it was, you know, it, it compares heroin. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, and then it got, ties into that addiction metaphor of uh, uh, being addicted. I mean, without, you know, without having the context in this song, but from the larger album, I think to me, it just feels like when you're in a sort of a, uh, almost like a toxic relationship mm -hmm. um, where you're, you're, it's you're addicted to the relationship and it's 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 being obsessive mm -hmm. as i think we used to call it obsessiveness pana oh, you remember right <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. so and, and and that's basically it it, it feels like you know that's a what special mention to a lot of the songs are about and specifically this one <laughs> shout out <laughs> 
but yeah um it 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 definitely it feels like that it's that's really what the metaphor here is right um yeah i mean it's the song is uh the song is about the details of this addiction and mm. um you mm. know the, then those metaphors and there's there's good wordplay i mean the songs are thought out uh firstly i feel a lot of the songs are based on real life circumstances like actual events that they just sort of converted to a mm-hmm. song and uh well that, that is what they said right they're they're based out of their real experiences over the past couple of years mhm i mean um the like all of because it's the as you mentioned it's the combination of all the all three of them like the lyrics are yeah yeah so yeah it just feels like a also it's like a, it's a song to self as well like you know you you sort of uh, um uh, agreeing to yourself that you know this this is an addiction and seeing things clearly like this is this is this this is this this is bad this is good and this felt mm-hmm. good etc like put, putting things clearly in your head properly i mean just just um just yeah blowing some different perspectives too yeah yeah no yeah true and the song also has a acoustic version and uh, interestingly one thing i noticed was that uh, the acoustic versions of actually all the acoustic versions that, that are there in the deluxe version of the album are half a note lower than their like actual uh, mm-hmm. the actual tracks um, like they actually tuned the guitars half a note lower they used the same sort of open chords and all of that okay. and you know it's interesting because i think the singers both Dan and Matt they have like very heavy voices and i think generally when artists sometimes when they're singing live or they're doing sessions one after the other they tend to sing it half a note lower so that their voices don't get tired right. you know they don't tire themselves out because when you're recording in a studio you can do it in takes and you can have breaks in between and right. if you listen to the acoustic versions i don't know the context of how they were recorded but they sort of kind of one take recordings right you've got because you you've generally got a voice in the beginning someone who's doing a countdown or like you guys ready you know there's like a bit of a feel to it that it's been recorded in like an informal environment mm-hmm. um but i just think it's interesting that they're half a note lower um all of them but i i would say this song i probably prefer the original version just cuz the all the older music and and the drums and everything they just work so well the acoustic version is still good but i feel like you miss out some of that i think the acoustic version of this this addiction um is is the <clears throat> one which which was i mean the furthest from my expectations cuz uh, out of all the acoustic versions this mm-hmm. is the only one that i did not enjoy if that's okay <laughs> yeah i mean i, I keep uh, trying to see i mean i yeah yeah but no, i was just saying like it's it's this is it, it doesn't add anything like it it just feels like it's an acoustic version of a song but mm-hmm. it doesn't like add anything to it being acoustic So it almost kind of feels like they just kind of did it for the sake of doing it. Maybe, but uh I mean because they chose quite random tracks for acoustics like it's not it's not like 1 2 3 4 it's just 1 2 no, 10 no. 15. It's some specific tracks, yeah. 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 Is there a reason for that? Do you know a reason for that? So I would think and I I so I I think I'll go by it as we go. So I think the reason they did uh the acoustic version of this addiction mm-hmm. is cuz that's the name of the album this is the opening track right this is one of their main tracks which is why i think when they were doing the acoustic versions it was like we've got to do this addiction right that's like our main opener um but i think we'll go through it as we go through it and maybe okay. there's other reasons okay um but yeah from from this addiction we get to dying dying my darling uh which is actually a reference to a misfits song die die my darling yeah. and apparently they're big fans of misfits um but this track is actually sung by dan 
instead of Matt. And to be honest, in this album, as we'll go through, uh, and I didn't know this beforehand, like who sang which one. I just knew they were slightly different voices, um, like when I initially heard the album. But the songs mm -hmm. that I really, really, for me, that stood out were the songs that Dan sang. I mean, some of them are by Matt as well, and I think I'll point I them out was, as we go through. I was but gonna this just was say one the of same. Them. I was going to say the same thing, but hey. I just didn't want to. Yeah. Well, you know, be against Matt because well I, oh all, all no the no there's nothing I against think. like I think Matt sounds yeah I mean I've heard their previous albums as well right and I think Matt sounds uh, uh, great I just think the the songs that Dan has like it, there's an element of how the song is written I think as well that connects with me quite well and then his voice it's even it's like almost it and the the voices do sound very similar. They're not very different voices. They're both that heavy sounding mm -hmm. voice. But I don't know, Dan's voice to me just stands out a bit more. No, I could tell that Feels this like was natural. a different singer than the previous one. So, like, because uh, there, there's this song and then the, uh, the songs that Dan sang in this album, I think I can point them out because they they have mm -hmm. a, I mean, the, the voice has a different... Uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and it yeah, just I mean, for it's, me, it's I, a I different just, element. Yeah, it just really captures it. Yeah, so yeah, I think you know another very interestingly and I would say beautifully written song. Um, you know, it's it's interesting. So I I can't I don't know I need to actually I probably should have probably googled this, but if I remember correctly, it was something like you know Dan had a friend uh, mm -hmm. who like passed away and like he couldn't say goodbye to his. Uh, like girlfriend or partner, yeah, I, I, um, and that yeah. person was also a Misfits fan or something. I saw that so, interview. So, yeah. and I mean, the I read nah, the interview and then, in and, detail. Ah, well, there we go. And then there was also um, so so some of that came from that, I suppose, when they when they wrote this song. Um, but I just think it's really interesting, like the way, right? Like it's it's very upbeat sounding. It sounds very fun and cheerful, like the melody and if you if you're not listening to the lyrics. But the lyrics are literally just like, you know, Let's like before die. he dies, like you can yeah. keep my last breath floating in your lungs, you know, like it's it's almost haunting. Also the way it's uh, in the in the interview, Dan says that um you know he didn't have a chance to say goodbye and to the woman you he really loved. Did and... your research. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then he says um like the, the two of his favorite things in the world were the misfits and eating good food with his daily. Mm. And uh, so that's what Dan oh, mixed these two elements up. And uh, that's why it's Dine Dine, my darling. And um, yeah, so yeah. I mean, that Amazing. that was, a, this was an MTV interview. And um, but it this song sort of stood out in the first, Listen, like the first time I heard it, the yeah. song stood out. Yeah. And obviously, especially the chorus. The, 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 dang, dang, yeah. dang. I, I had to Google I had to Google what red letter day means. Because I always heard it, but I never really uh I was like, I don't I know what it is. But apparently it's just a way to say it's a day of importance, because like something with like on Roman calendars, days of importance would be in red. So okay. red letter day is like a day of like significance. Oh, is this one of those things, you know, you hear it and you just kind of, it's just because for this video, I was like, actually, what does that mean? <laughs> Let me Google it. Um, but yeah, no, excellent, excellent song. And then, yeah, there's an acoustic version of this as well. So let's dine, 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 my darling. Uh, any, any thoughts? Again, half note lower. But I really like the acoustic version of this song. Um, I mean, oh. compared to the... The album version, uh, the acoustic version yeah. has, I mean, it's got a very sing-along vibe to it. Um, mm -hmm. than than with the than the album version. So the acoustic version is more like, you know, um, people can give harmony in the chorus because the way yeah. he's, I don't know, he's not. It, it feels like he's out. singing like. Yeah, it's like he's singing with the audience almost. Like you'd expect the audience singing along if this was like a live concert. I mean, that's like that's, this is I where you join the, in. That's the tone of his voice or something like that. 
like it you it just i just kind of made yeah. it out that um i guess this yeah. is the part to sing along and this yeah. isn't this isn't the case with the album version while because the album version i think it's more of him screaming out because the music's the, mm. that way it's the music's electric well the music everything. it's very it's very intense you just listen to it it's very yeah. full while the acoustic version is you feel like you can join in this room yep. for more voices right yeah yeah interesting i mean i i think i still prefer the 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 track version for this song um i don't know it's probably just because i like to be honest i hadn't heard the acoustic versions except for one of them when i was originally when i was you know listening to this music it's only when doing you know re- listening for this video um that i heard these acoustic versions and i thought they were great but i just for me i i you know i've listened to the original track so many times so it's difficult for me to be like that's better <laughs> <laughs> right um okay so the next track on the album is lead poisoning and i think this track uh for me this is the point in the album where the drumming really starts to get you know it sort of it gets really interesting and i think as we go to the tracks i'll explain um but in this song particularly there's like the way that the rhythm kind of changes like between the verses and the chorus mm-hmm. it just kind of stands out compared to the first few songs um where i would say maybe it's a bit more straightforward mm-hmm. um but yeah i mean i think with the writing in the song you know i i've got there's a few things i've written down that i think stood out but what was your sort of impression of this song um i thought it's a i mean the song itself um by by uh, the lyrics of it it's like the person's consoling himself um that you know that the loved one was bad enough um and this is like my defense mechanism after the breakup or or you know just trying to make things better for myself um uh, that's i mean in a, that's the perspective i saw it in that you know that this is this is poison for me and that's i'm just telling myself that over and over and even the so i've written down even the way he sings uh, the lyric where which is the chorus the lead poisoning part So he sings in a way that he he's giving up like because mm-hmm. it's lead poisoning like yeah. you know in in that sort of tone so it I got that feeling from uh, uh making uh, from just keeping a track of the lyrics itself yeah i mean it's 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 definitely i think There's different I mean, I, ways to take it. I don't have much it, on the music. Yeah. Because it's a little intense. Uh for yeah. this for well, this. Well, I I, I would say with the music uh, yeah, I mean I wonder how you took it, but I I for me it really stood out, you know, the pipes that start playing. <laughs> like that I don't know if you noticed, there are the pipes that start playing like I'd say like halfway in the second half. Okay. And to me it's just made it sound more whimsical and upbeat even though the lyrics are not um but yeah it, it the the pipes to me this really stood out when I when I heard this track but the way i take lead poisoning is to me it almost sounds like a state of like uh, uh like i don't know like being suicidal or like being you know there's a line like you know waiting for a bullet train to bring me my lead poisoning it just feels mm-hmm. like you you it's a term that's it's obviously not talking about actual lead poisoning but it's talking about like a state of condition where like after this event or whatever you're feeling so down and so depressed and that's really what again lead poisoning being used as a metaphor but you can also take it as like shooting yourself or something right mm-hmm. like lead poisoning <laughs> um So yeah, I just think it's an interesting choice of words. But I think overall in this track really what what struck to me was like the drumming musically and then the the use of pipes. I thought, you know, it, it pulled me out a little bit from like what the rest of the songs are like, but I just mm-hmm. thought it was an interesting use. Mm-hmm. And then from Red Poisoning, 
we get to Dead on the Floor. Now this is probably one of my favorite tracks like off this album. Like I, I absolutely love this track. And you know, like from the intro riff that we heard in the intro of this video, <laughs> and to like the drum beat in the main track, you know, like that unusual rhythm again. They've got it's not like a standard, simple like drum beat. It, it's like it's got offbeat licks, and it, it's just very interesting. And the chorus, the writing, the music, all of it. I, I this song is like one of my favorites. Like I can I like love every single line of this song. I can just sit there and recite it. <laughs> It's, um, isn't isn't yeah. this like the song of you know uh, when you uh, the song is basically a feeling of the feeling that you get when the loved one is about to leave or has left. Yeah, but I mean, it, they're, they're yeah. still your loved one. Like you haven't broken up or anything, but they they're yeah. leaving and they're leaving for like a while or something like that. A long distance relationship, maybe. Well, like, look, I think firstly, full disclosure, when I heard this album, like when I started really falling in love with this album, I was not in a relationship. Like I and, and it's like you'd imagine I heard this like during, you know, a breakup or something and I really connected. But generally I was single at the time, but I, I just and I was more of like a I would say at that age, I was like, you know, a hopeless romantic type of scenario that yeah, one day. Um but it, it was, you know, it, it I don't know, this song, I just really connected because, yeah, okay, also one thing to note is this is the first song to have like a marine reference, like a ship metaphor. And it's, a lot of the songs have that, a metaphor, like a reference or a metaphor to like a ship or like a marine sort of situation. But yeah, like two Why ships in that? the night, we're colliding and sinking. I don't know, actually. They just they just have it <laughs> over and over in a couple of songs. And okay. I, I don't know, I, to me, it, just, it really works. Um, but... Yeah. Again, like the writing, like every single line in this song, um, it just feels so beautifully written mm -hmm. that it just it almost feels like it doesn't belong in a in like a punk rock song, if that makes sense. But right. it does, like because they make it work so well. Because again, the music and everything, and and you know, it's they've got this the way they write is, you know, because sometimes writing can be poetic, but you feel distant because no one talks like that in real life. You know, it's poetry. Like, you feel disconnected from it. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like Alkaline Trio do the, do this thing where they'll write something and you feel like, okay, you know, that's beautiful, but I obviously no one talks like that. And mm -hmm. then they'll say something else, you know, like, like, well, the fact of the matter is both our hearts shattered way too goddamn easily. And like that use of goddamn, like, it just makes it real again. It's like, okay, that is how you talk. And I don't know, just like the juxtaposition of both these things and uh, everything. It's just my. Uh, I really like the way you know. he sings. Uh... Oh, there are hearts. So, like, that's. Uh... And if you ask me if I'd stay forever. It, like, it's. Um, the words are interestingly put. Like, uh, you, can, you can say the same thing in a different way, but. Um, yeah. Saying it, saying it in that, I don't know. In this sort of um, more English way, I'd say, like the fact of the matter. And you know what? There's like a weird, there's like a weird sarcasm in his voice sometimes. In both the singers, Matt and Dan, and even in this song, there's like the way. But I'm, you know, but I'm glad that you came. No regret and no shame, as I'm lying here dead on the floor. There's like a, there's like a sarcasm to it, and you can hear it in the voice when he's singing it. Yeah. It's, it's in quite a, quite a few songs. The way they've written it is like. You know, like, I'm glad that you came. No regret and no shame as I'm lying here dead on the floor. <laughs> it, there's, yeah. like, this weird uh, sarcasm. And, and his voice really brings it out with the music. I just think it works so well. True, true. Uh, the, yeah, there is, I mean, now, now that you fan. say it, uh, that, that does, uh, the way he sings, like, it's the end of the mm -hmm. verse, which is dead on the floor. Dead on the floor. Yeah. So that's like full stop. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, now that you're saying it, I mean, pointing that out, it yeah might might seem like that if you're listening to it because yeah he does put it in a way which can be sarcastic. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I don't yeah. know if sarcasm is like the right term. Like maybe a literary person would not, but it's just 
it's it's the way he puts it where it's like there's it's like he's joking but he's serious but then it's mm-hmm. also like he uses these opposites right like i got on that plane with my heart soaring mm-hmm. but now it's falling like snow it's it's just like you know the next line is like oh, okay yeah <laughs> you know brings it down um but yeah i just think this song i just sit there and recite it's it's it's, it's so beautifully written i think um and yeah, there is a acoustic version as well of this song, and I think. This is one of the tracks where I feel, for me, the acoustic version, because I, I guess because I heard it back in the day. Mm-hmm. To me, I, I like the acoustic version even more than the main track, and I think mm-hmm. it's to do with, again, the the beat, the drums, and the main track are great, but this acoustic version of like. You know, you gotta you gotta slice in the audio here, but it's it just it makes it sound. It just gives it a completely different feel. It's the same song, but it feels so different in the acoustic version. Yeah, uh, I mean, I uh, so yeah, the acoustic version for this was. Uh, I mean, yeah, I I have something. So it's like a what the feeling I got out of the acoustic version was that it's a perfect analogy for the feeling one gets in such a loving but a fallout situation. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's what I that's what I wrote down and I think yeah I think that fits the theme which is when you love someone but then you ask you are parting ways for the time being being in a long distance or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess if that works out, I mean, the it it yeah. follows the theme through, but it had a different. Uh, the acoustic did have a different feeling to it uh, than the right. It, I know it just feels uh, very yeah. It feels even more uh, uh, endearing. I don't know if that's the right sort of way, but it's just his voice and the drums and the acoustic guitars with that rhythm. It just the whole thing just comes together really well, I think. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, again, uh, now that you're pointing that out, and the since the the hook part of this song was the uh, is the you know is when he ends with the dead on the floor. Um, so, so that that's just sort of ringing in my head, and that's yeah. I mean, it probably is something like not uh you're right it's not sarcasm it's something he's saying it maybe cynically need a need a bloody english teacher in here to like tell us what it is but it is yeah it, it is i mean you, well, know, you, you feel me we get it yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's not as straightforward you know there's there's a weird way and it's it's there that tone that playful tone yeah. i'd say is there in, in, in a lot of the songs and then we get to the American Scream, which is play on the words, the American Scream. Um, but so this song is probably like one of their only like, uh, uh, from what I've heard anyway, their only like political songs, so to speak. Um, it was inspired by uh, the suicide of a United States Army soldier after he came uh-huh. back from Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, they they you know he read an article and then they started writing a song about it, um, right. which is basically the whole story of the song. Right. Um, I think you know originally when I heard this song, I didn't really know the context of of the background, um, mm-hmm. but I think to me what really stood out again the drumming, especially in the chorus, it just it hits hard like. It, you know, it's it's going all out. It's just the the end of like Derek is is just really innovating like what he can do in the song. Um, it's not just a simple rhythm. The way he changes it up, I think it works uh, really really well. Um, but yeah, what, what were your sort of thoughts? Uh, I I actually I mean you sort of answered what my question was. So my question was. Is there a story behind this? And that's the story that uh, about that. Uh, uh, yeah, it was like basically the soldier Afghanistan came back, back and then he went and he just shot himself. Because I, yeah. I wrote down, because uh, mm, it feels really, like uh, from a perspective 
of something or someone that has already happened uh because the chorus says mm-hmm. uh, and that's where she found me so like uh and in the cemetery and then that the the Smoking the guitar riff mind. with that that's that's like a good yeah head bang maybe I and the know. drums man and the drums <laughs> <laughs> like it just it hits hard everything just comes together so well But yeah, I think after after uh, uh, finding out about the backstory, I think some of the lyrics make more sense because like I've picked out like two lines here. Like all along, so they were rooting for the home team as they sent to the game and torn apart. Like basically, I think you know it's it's sort of saying in this in again a sort of a cynical way, right? Like soldiers, they're like, yeah, we you know we're gonna fucking do this, <laughs> we're gonna win, and we get sent to the battlefield, and that's when reality hits you and. the reality of war right tears you apart cuz like this guy came back and killed himself and then you know as we blindly clap and cheer from the sidelines clear on a losing streak uh from the sidelines it's clear on a losing streak uh from the very start like you know they were sent there but it's almost like the no one win like even if you're the soldier who comes home you didn't win you lost cuz yeah. you were there like the fact of being there and having to do those things in and i'm not saying that's the absolute you know objective truth of reality but i'm just saying this is the perspective i feel mm-hmm. like the lyrics are giving that like you know there's no winning in these things you're killing people or you're getting killed and both yeah. of them is like when you come back is dire so i just i just feel you know the lyrics hit a harder knowing the context of mm-hmm. how that song was written right right makes sense and um mm-hmm. yeah i mean that that question just came in my head that if, because it it really felt like uh, from a perspective and since it's since it's uh, it was clearly an american scream which could have been related to the army so my guess was something related to the army but it is <laughs> yeah there it is okay um But yeah and then from the american screen we get to off the map now this is again one of my favorite favorite tracks of this album and interestingly again dan uh, sang this one um beautifully yeah. written i think <laughs> yeah it is beautifully written i think you know on, on the surface it's about sort of like a difficult uh, uh, challenging relationship Mm-hmm. you know when you're getting into our, i mean what well, the first line like i needed more wine you needed more sleep we just for two hours so it's like immediately like okay you know the context that like they're in a relationship they're fighting um uh, but i think the way that the lyrics are written i think bring out so much more in this song it does follow a very common um, guitar riff like for for such yeah. uh, for for the pace that the song follows from the beginning like yeah. i've written down like it's the song yeah. uh is a very different turn from the previous songs because this is mainly yeah. just like uh i don't know it's it's just a rock or a, maybe like a you know mix of blues and rock because yeah, because yeah. of the guitars and i mean the that, thing that is that it's guitar, again a very like positive vibing sound right uh something it's not similar like, like to like that in my dog yeah Yeah, it sounds uplifting. Yeah. Right and happy. Uplifting is a word. But right. obviously the lyrics yeah, yeah it, it sounds uplifting and happy but the guy is singing about something, you know. And you look in that chorus, you've got I don't know if sarcasm, we're going to find out what it's called. Um but you've got that again, right? Like like I'm I'm, I'm so far off the map the sun yes. is shining. While it's raining and I'm draped in silver lining, and you got that same like juxtaposition of right, like I'm so far off the map, the sun is shining while it's raining and I'm draped in silver lining, and the way right, like I can row, row, row. So it's just the whole thing. It just sounds very. There's I don't know what the right term is, but and also look another marine reference boat rowing. Ah, uh, yeah. Anchors yeah. away. maybe maybe there's there's a uh, uh you know like a i don't know background i think they, i think they just really i think they just really jammed i don't i mean it could be 
I just feel like in this album, they just really like, they just really de- like dug the, that metaphor of using like the ocean and ships and boats and they just kind of just went with it, you know, because they use it a few times in Maybe slightly different it's... ways. In fact, some of them are very similar. There's another line. Um, what's that song? Out of this kiddie pool. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll come to it as, as, as we're doing, but it almost sounds like that line belongs in this song. So it's almost like in that writing process, they came up with like a bunch of like metaphors, mm-hmm. right? And it got distributed out. Because, you know, musically, I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of the tracks, they almost feel like they're part of another track. Like they fit in. Like if you start playing one of the songs, you can just start playing the other one and the other one, and they will just fit in into the same type of like chord progressions. And I feel like some of the writing is like that. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, this I don't have much on the lyrics of this one because, um, uh, again, the song was upbeat, so you're just mm-hmm. kind of sailing through it. But um, yeah. yes, I I did. It, most of the song is like a catchy hook because most of the lyrics yeah. are just sort of following the same pattern, so you can make sense and just follow it through yeah yeah i mean the only no, I, I, thing i've written the, is, the chorus is yeah i mean the, the only thing i have is like uh it's it's this upbeat sound throughout yeah upbeat uplifting it's it, it is there and i think to me like the the chorus basically uh you know it just I mean, the song, it's like, you know, when you're in that state of mind where everything is going to shit, but like mentally, you're somewhere else. (laughs) You just stop giving a crap about everything and anything, right? And that, I think at that level is what the chorus to me connects. Like, I'm so far off the map, the sun is shining. Like, I'm surprised they didn't do a music video for this one because I feel like they could have done some really interesting things. Like some really interesting VFX yeah, exactly. And the next song we have is Draculina. So the intro of this song with the organs and that rock sound and like the whatever to wonder is just yeah, it just to and there's like this weird like echo effect and voice modulation and it's like that's to me, that is so earlier. much punk rock. Yeah. Oh, in the other song. Yeah, I know. I, I noticed it in this one. And it was like, to me, it's just so much like, it brings me to that punk rock feel with like the organs and almost like Good Charlotte, you know? It's like <laughs> that sort of vibe. Um, but I, I'd say to me, this is one of the more like fun songs. I don't know what that means. You know, the, uh, interestingly, because um, just... Just cause there's a history. Um, mm-hmm. I I actually looked into this one fact uh, about Alkaline Trio that um, um, that are any of the members related to or are <clears throat> or previously were part of Good Charlotte. <laughs> I was just wondering. I mean, is I, that I a just, thing? I was I was just wondering. No, I don't think so. That's not a thing, but I because. Okay, okay. I mean, because, <laughs> well, because you yeah, just said it. How do know that? Yeah. Because <laughs> you just said it. That, you know, it's, yeah, the it, good it's, Charlotte. It's got yeah, the good Charlotte. Sim- similarity there. sometimes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even the voices sometimes. But this song specifically with like the organs and, and that intro, it just, to me. The it's, intro yeah. is, yeah. The it's intro like is a, very captivating. Again, I feel like such a missed opportunity for a great music video. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. song, right? Yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, like in terms of the lyrics and, and stuff, I think with this song, uh, to me, it is it is just, again, using everything as metaphors. But to me, it feels like it's about, you know, when a relationship starts, like maybe they he pictured it or they pictured it as like being like heaven. And, and you know, it as things progressed, it got more toxic and negative. Mm-hmm. To me, it feels like that. Because mm-hmm. um, again, it's very sort of heavy in metaphors. But yeah, I just and this is the song I kind of enjoy more, like it, in terms of the music, and I guess that's what I mean by like the kind of just having fun. 
um, it's, I mean, uh, besides that, it's, uh, I mean, the chorus is quite a catch, uh, along with mm -hmm. the lyrics are really just about how a bad influence this person named Jacqueline is. Like, you know, mm -hmm. that, that she's a bad person and it's, um, he's just in a zone where he's probably asking himself whatever happened to Wonderland and that's that's when yeah. you're also in the zone because of the sound and the way they well, introduce that that section which yeah. I think follows through after the first verse yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean that that's a captivating sound that the it's and I think clean. that's what I'm getting at it's yeah it's no, it, it work, is. Yeah. It very much it stands out that whatever happened to Wonderland part, right? Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of what you were saying, like that bad influence, and I think that's what really it is. It's like there's this initial positive period or, or this positive uh, optimistic out outlook and then yeah. it gets negative. And I think that's what sort of the song captures, right? Yeah, yeah. But still I mean, on point yeah. with like the theme of the album. They're all uh, different. I mean, they're not. They're all different. They're like all different chapters of a relationship, but not of mm -hmm. the same relationship. Yeah. Right. Different. This, yeah, this yeah. Is, no, that's very true. I mean, they otherwise, <laughs> if if it's part of the same relationship, then it's a hell of a dramatic yeah. relationship. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that there's there's a way to like decipher who who wrote which song in the sense of like <laughs> which storylines <laughs> are following the same, you know? Because like for me, like something like Dead on the Floor, to me it was more like a uh, almost like a fling romance sort of thing. It didn't last that long, um, Maybe, and yeah. either something summer happened love. and you know it had to yeah summer love. Yeah. But some of the other songs, like Lead Poisoning, are much more dire in the sense of, like, or even Off the Map. It sounds like it's a relationship that has gotten old. Dracula right. as well. Like right. it's sort of aged and didn't age well, right? Right, right. It got worse with time. Mm -hmm. But you need time for that. It can't be a summer love. Like mm -hmm. Dracula can't be a summer love, I don't think. But it's an interesting point you make. That's very true. I mean, they're all chapters. They're, from, they're all yeah. different chapters, but... If it's if it's of the same again, you got even numbers in front of them and everything. Yeah. <laughs> if if yeah. it's from of the same relationship, right. then it's a very dramatic relationship. Otherwise, I don't think it's yeah. of you know of just one. <laughs> it can't one, be the same relationship. Story. Like holy, yeah. I mean that's just a roller coaster. Like, it's not crap. relationship. That's, that is a roller coaster <laughs> relationship. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, and now we get to uh, the eighth uh, track of the album, Eating Me Alive. And again, this is sort of very, uh, uh, the metaphors in this track, again, are dialed to like a hundred. Um, you know, it's it's just like, just the opening, right? Well, I found you outside like a sunrise that melted my eyes from my skull. It's like, you know, going all the way. Like that is some sunrise you saw. I As mean, I that's... turned into ash before my sweet demise, the end of me was so beautiful. So it's like, you know, it's it's dialed to 100. He doesn't stop at like the second line <laughs> or the third line. Just keeps going on. Uh, at which point it doesn't feel like a metaphor. It, it just feels it's literal. Uh, there's, right. there's a part where he's... Um, uh, where she said all the right words, all the wrong words, but the right words. No, yeah. I think it was no, no. So it was. Uh, I've got that line because I really like that line, and I'm gonna read the whole the whole thing. <laughs> so, well, well, now you're stuck in my head like a love song. I, I won't sing it, but that climb to the top of the charts. How the fuck can something be so wrong and so right? All the wrong words, but all the right parts. I think yes. that's the that's the line you're talking that's about. That's the line I'm talking about. I think yeah. I mean, yeah. that's I I found that to be a cool wordplay. Like, you know, it's the wrong words, yeah. but the right parts, because the wrong words yeah. can be like, you know, you defining anything negatively it, from the perspective of the person, it'll be a wrong thing. But 
yeah. also uh, you like so hence it's the right part because it's factual but it's the wrong words because yeah. it's negative for the person taking it so i mean that, yeah. that's no, that, cool that's really true though. i think yeah that's really interesting actually because like for me uh this whole this whole paragraph of like now you're stuck in my head like a love song to like all the right parts to me like together it just felt so such an interesting use of like how they've placed it together right. um and again that metaphor being done right it doesn't just stop at like you're stuck in my head like a love song then you climb to the top of the charts and then something being so wrong and so right all the wrong words but all the right parts so it's like a song that you're listening to where like you love the song but you hate the lyrics so again those metaphors <laughs> being dialed to 100 here yeah. um and also like interestingly this is a very like synth heavy track right it, musically yeah. i think it stands out from the rock sound of the rest of the the other tracks it does right. have a i mean it does uh, so the lyrics as you mentioned in the beginning that uh it, it he's <clears throat> dialing it to 100 and he's not stopping so those lyrics are what puts it into the punk rock category but uh, yeah. yeah i mean i mean uh, maybe the music you know is... the irony is the irony is if you look at the so if the actual reviews right you were mentioning like mixed reviews mm -hmm. and this is one of the songs eating me alive where reviews actually said right that uh they to them like the this synth music and everything was really like it, it took him out of it they didn't like the sound they they mm -hmm. thought it was written well um Uh, but it's just the music and and the melody to them it just felt too much not like alkaline trio and they just didn't connect with it mm -hmm. and it's almost the opposite of like the wrong words but all the right parts because <laughs> for the reviewers it was the other way around <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's yeah. it's just interesting like you know it, I mean, there, there, it is a, a different it, sounding yeah. track yeah um and lyrically i think again in terms of talking about relationship stages i feel like this is a relationship that's again sort of gone like sour with time because mm -hmm. he says the time has come and gone but i'd do anything for you mm -hmm. and even the chorus of like you know you can sit there and tell me that i didn't try it's like a relationship that has gotten old um and maybe like now they've broken up and that is really like killing him the fact that yeah it's it, it just anymore. but i suppose uh, you could take it yeah. it's like uh, the way i took it is that he's sad about losing his girl uh because of mm -hmm the reasons that he's listing out in the song um but he, he he's basically sick of the whole blame game and that's eating him alive like you can you mm. can put it all me you can i mean put it all on yeah. me and um that um that what what did he say that i did i did try and i did put in my best i'd do anything yeah. for you and you yeah. know stuff like yeah. that but you can But yeah, then you can sit there and tell me that I didn't try. I can honestly so, tell you. So but then that that's what keeping him alive because that's what carries forward yeah. to and it's eating me alive. Yeah. Yeah, True. I mean that that that's the way I took it cuz he's yeah. just he's just sick of you know this the continuous blame game that I didn't do it but I yeah. did do it. But you know yeah. you got to stop saying that and, and not end this cuz i did try mm -hmm. so yeah no that's that's perfect yeah <laughs> perfect for <Rezi. laughs> um yeah and then we get to piss and vinegar <laughs> sounds like a recipe for something <laughs> i'm piss and vinegar again mm -hmm. um So yeah, I mean, you know, the title "Piss and Vinegar" it's like a reference, like sort of means like being rowdy and like disagreeable and all of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's an interesting song to me. Like this one is a bit harder to decipher. Like it, it feels like it's like a post breakup type song, like being crazy about someone and right. being toxic. Like how you go about it in a negative way because like you're being right. rowdy and you're being aggressive. Um, and there's some references. in there like in the chorus he says clockwork orange herbicide i have no idea what that means so clockwork orange is a very good movie it's uh it's a uh, i think a sequel from shining mm -hmm. i think so um 
it's got clockwork orange is the one which has got that tricycle that kid riding through the tricycle through the hotel but what's, the what what does herbicide have but, to do with it herbicide so herbicide basically just means the the substance that kills trees but even i didn't i didn't make any sense well not not I was tree, hoping but, that, yeah insects that kill herbs yeah i i mean i was i was hoping that you would have some more insight no, on the clock the, the closest part. thing i've got is there's a picture of um uh now i can't remember it was, was one of the album covers so there was somewhere a photo and like the on the guitar on the amp it said orange mm-hmm. and then someone and i, I was googling this because i really was curious and someone else was mentioning like i don't know if this was like during the vietnam war or, or one of the wars they used uh chemicals and i think the code name was like clockwork orange or something and then the mm-hmm. herbicide thing makes a more, bit more sense but to be fair i mean it could be anything knowing these guys um <laughs> but just in general i think the song to me the lyrics um, it's harder to decipher um it's just an interesting song though i do think musically it has similarities to some of the other songs mm-hmm. uh, in terms of like the way the melody is and the sound is um but yeah it's one of the more difficult sort of nuts to crack <laughs> <laughs> but wh- why is it named piss and vinegar because he's piss and vinegar again he says it in the first line yeah <laughs> <laughs> but that's i mean what so why piss and vinegar is my question it it, it, yeah, it is a unique like choice of words um, so it's just a creative yeah, i don't know choice yeah i mean like piss piss and vinegar is a is is a is sort of a saying from even before this like it, yeah like i said it sort of means just being like like you know piss and vinegar like you're just being rowdy you're just being mm-hmm. like disagreeable you're like you know okay. uh, confrontational i don't know what the right term probably google it um but it's like i'm pissed so that's why i feel like what he's trying to say is he's being that like he's maybe got drunk or not but he's being like that self again like the self that you know is aggressive and hurtful and like doesn't necessarily go about the way the right you know go about things the right way right um right but yeah yeah i mean the song the Clock song work, orange by, orange side, man. by the music uh, the song puts you in the rock zone like right from the start yeah and, oh that's uh, true yeah yeah i think i think overall it's it's about losing a dear friend could be Uh, you know what it's about it's about clockwork orange herbicide okay <laughs> okay if you say so, i mean you, you you're the you're the one yeah, who researched on it <laughs> no that that's always that's the one like guys if you know just let us know in comments what what that means <laughs> the, I, the the line is i got a burning temptation like clockwork orange herbicide I don't know what temptation has to do with any of that. I'm just very curious. <laughs> um yeah, and then from piss and vinegar we get to Dorothy. So some context. So this is actually uh, influenced by the movie Blue, Blue Velvet. Velvet. Um yeah, I think what a quote from him where he says like, you know, it's it's sort of influenced by Blue Velvet, but it's a metaphor for someone and something else. and then he's like everything on the record is stuff that definitely hits close to home for us and we try to communicate that in the songs now i i i just from wikipedia i don't know if have you seen blue velvet velvet yeah okay well from wikipedia <laughs> the film concerns a young college student who returning home to visit his ill father discovers a severed human ear in a field that leads to him uncovering a vast criminal conspiracy and entering a romantic relationship with a troubled lounge singer so that is a lot to take in but i don't i haven't seen the movie so my thoughts about this song are like about the song like i don't have no context about the movie but yeah you go first cuz since you've seen the movie and all yeah i mean i did you watch when... the movie because of this video that was your research <laughs> no, no no i i had i have watched the movie like last yeah. year or something but i couldn't i couldn't Mm. really place the song you know like, like in proportion <laughs> okay. to the yeah. movie but yeah but um what i found out was that um i mean after finding out that it's about their close friend dorothy who mm-hmm. 
was close to all of them who died while they were recording their previous album. Um, ah, okay. So, um, for, first of all, it it felt <clears throat> more grounded after I got to know this. Um, mm. And also, it just kind of felt like they're missing her in so many things and they mention it all in the lyrics. Like, mm-hmm that mm-hmm. Dorothy used to do this and Dorothy was like this and you know th- those sort of yeah. comparisons that they would have wanted or wished to do or you know things that they missed Dorothy well, how did over. how did she pass away is there any context to that that uh, no I, I did not read that no um, I mean to me like from from the l- lyrics for me, what I could decipher, right? So he starts off with, um, like, uh, found you out there on your doorstep under the nines mm-hmm. from your Sunday best black and blue velvet dress. And the way I took it is, like, black and blue velvet dress, like, maybe she was bruised, like, hurt or damaged. Um, yeah. And the lyrics of, like, I'm coming home, you know, I hope you're waiting there. Uh, I know times have been tough on you. It's all downhill from here. And I'm racing to your doorway, Dorothy. So to me, it feels like almost like, again, like Dorothy is like suicidal or something. And like he's trying to like get to her or or like save her in time almost. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, again, that black and blue velvet dress to me, to me, it referenced like her being bruised. It doesn't have to be physically, maybe emotionally, but like yeah. in her individual that he's trying to get to. But yeah, it is to me one of the hardest songs uh, to decipher. And at the two minutes, like 39 second mark, there's like, I don't know if you heard it, there's like a uh, background voice of like a girl or something. Like there's a sound effect, which I thought was quite interesting. No, I I didn't. I mean, I I didn't didn't pay attention to that. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I only heard it because I've heard it so many times. And then I was like, wait, what is that? And you can only hear it. If you if you're uh, wearing headphones, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and then we get to find another one of my favorites <laughs> of the album. Interestingly, this is also uh, sung by uh, Dan, mm-hmm. and. Um, yeah, I just I love this song as well. I don't know. I to me the writing of this song it really stands out. Firstly, it starts off with that guitar riff, which sounds again sort of fresh. It sounds even like more pop than like mm-hmm. punk rock. Um, but yeah, just the just the writing. I'm it's just beautiful. It Very has another uh, boat reference. Who was <laughs> the boat reference? Yeah. If I'm the captain of this boat, then all my shipmates are fools. <laughs> and all the stars in the world couldn't help right. me steer my way out of this kiddie pool. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> I that's, know that, that's what you were uh, uh, mentioning. Yeah, so this yeah. song almost feels like, yeah, yeah, but like off the map, mm-hmm. like some of the references and things. Um but yeah, so I, mean, I, I just I mean after I after like a few extra listens, I so there's a chime um uh, chime sound like along with the beat. Yeah. I I don't know mm-hmm. if you noticed that. Do you yep. have you? Yeah. I mean that yeah. so I, I only figured that out like after some a few listens and it's yeah. like uh I mean it's very rhythmic and First of all, the chimes feel very um, uh, different from a very punk rock album. And uh, yeah, I like, mean, add, this, add the, the music in this track in general, right? It feels like a, it, almost like more pop or something than than punk rock. I'd say, mm, mm, yeah, a little bit, a little. Well, the the music, the guitar in the beginning is. I mean, for me, it was very outstandingly rhythmic. Is what I've written down, mm-hmm. and um, <laughs> nice. And then, and then that rhythm follows on after the first verse, and you know, then it follows through. But that that yeah. rhythmic sound and those chimes are, are like those musical elements that stood out. 
and of course the chorus mm-hmm. which where he's yelling out i'm fine <laughs> i'm i'm fine yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Again you have that sarcasm, right? <laughs> It's going to yeah. hurt like hell but like I'm fine. <laughs> but I'm fine. And then you know I love this part like it's ironic that I drink to make my inside stop hurting. It's a love that gives me heartburn. It's a song that makes my stomach turn. I just know it's just like so well put, you know. Uh it's not what you expect. and then you know and i wouldn't trade my hand for all the aces in the deck so i think it goes back to that theme of like he's gone through hell but again he mm-hmm. doesn't regret it and in an in, if you want to put a negative connotation on it he's addicted to like misery that's why he's saying i'm fine right like yeah. this is life i'm fine with it. it this is it you know but he's pulled he's drawn to it yeah to that suffering being miserable And you know we we all know friends who get into toxic relationships, and then we ask them why they're in it. Yeah, that that's a <laughs> dead air right there. <laughs> okay, and uh, yeah, and this song has a acoustic version as well. I guess. I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, I think I think this one is also half note lower. Um and I think the acoustic version is interesting but to me I just again I prefer the main track. I I like the I acoustic version of this and uh well, uh well since I I'm introduced to the band and to the album with the yeah. deluxe version so knowing yeah. that the acoustic versions are just like versions of the songs in a different with different instruments. Um I would have expected this song to have an acoustic like it's that song to have yeah, an acoustic yeah right <laughs> yeah at least I mean it starts off with a guitar riff for god's sake right and and, yeah. and the guitar riff is not even like a proper like distortion or something right so it's got to have an acoustic version I I mean the, the acoustic version is what I expected and there was an acoustic version excellent And so I mean the original album ended here so fine was the last uh, track on the album but in the deluxe version along with the acoustic versions there's two more songs so the first one is kick rocks no and uh, this is again a uh, sung, sung by Dan but I believe Derek uh, the the drummer Derek mm-hmm. he does the backing vocals in the song yeah. interestingly um mm-hmm. but yeah I think you know I don't have too much to say about the song. I mean, I feel it's it's sort of about like time passing by or like getting older, right? In terms of what the what it's lyrically talking about. Okay. Um, but no, I'd be interested in what your take is. Well, I I thought it's a it's a breakup song. I mean, he's <laughs> it's he's talking about all the good times they had and uh, uh, when the chorus comes in mm-hmm. and. you know it's he he never wants it to end like he never yeah. wants the time to end yeah, with yeah. we can drink from the hourglass yeah and we can make time stop uh then there's the yeah so uh, i think it's um he never wants it to end and even though the world would the world would still revolve around them mm-hmm. so like mm-hmm. that that yeah, that sort of game, yeah, feeling of yeah. breakup song which yeah. a breakup song where he's trying to you know convince the person that let's not or maybe something like that but yeah. i mean yeah uh, musically it's very <clears throat> it's very punk rock and um, yeah yeah i mean ultimate punk rock with the even with the name called mm-hmm. kick rocks yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah mm. yeah interesting true um yeah and then we get to the last uh, song on this album uh, before the acoustic versions uh, those lungs <laughs> and <laughs> those <laughs> <coughs> and uh, yeah i think uh, this song is to me i think it's about a long distance relationship and i think specifically to me and i could be like just making it up but to me it feels like it's about Yeah you know, like when you when you're when you're a sort of successful musician you got to hit the road go on tour mm-hmm. and you know you miss your family or you miss your partner yeah 
Yeah. Because like the song, the lyrics, like how has it happened that I get to have you for so long, but then you're just ripped away from me as I get tossed out to the sea to fight the sharks out there and wait for a wind swell. And he's, oh, I'm kind of a sailor back in 1942. Yeah, difference. I want to fight the good fight, but goddamn, I'm going to miss you. So yeah, there's another uh, sort there's of another, marine yeah. reference. Yeah, but and, it's, uh, it, the way he used the reference is, I'm a sailor going into, the, you know, I won't be like, you know, they've gone for years and years sometimes. I think it's, it's just, it's just a uh, way to put that uh, the, the Dan misses his wife. Um, yeah. When he's out. Well, I think this one is written by, well, this one's headed by Matt. So I think he might be the lead writer on this one, Matt. Oh, okay. Who knows? So. Well, I mean, whoever Ooh, the no. leads, the singer, the singer is missing his wife when he's on the yeah. road touring or... The and, writer, yeah. You know, he's just, he's, uh, as as with the song, as the song goes, he's looking forward to come yeah. back home and be with her. Yeah, That's I think so. Um, I mean, beyond that, I couldn't really decipher, like, you know, don't, don't lose your tongue, don't lose your lungs. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, it could be like, wait for me. You know, in, mm-hmm. in a sense, it's what he's trying to say. Mm-hmm. Um, like, don't make out with someone else and don't die. <laughs> <laughs> like, those are the two things that could happen. So, you know, it could be that. It could be something else. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> there we have it. That is the full album, guys. And uh, I think, well you know, well, firstly, before I, I give my sort of more concluding thoughts, you, I'm curious as to, like, overall, now that we've gone through the songs, because you kind of mentioned like a, a love-hate relationship, right? So I'm curious to know, like, to you, what were the songs that you sort of connected to or were drawn to? And what were the songs that you were kind of like, eh. <laughs> why is um, Pumpkin making me listen to this? Oh, you want to know both those, both those categories? Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, well, I'll, say, I'll start with my favorite, which is Dying, Dying, My Darling. And there is... Uh, Dead on the Floor is a good song, but I mean, not that I was going back to. Um, mm. uh, off the Map is something that... Off the Map is very reminiscent of another song, but I can't place it. I mean, it's, it's as I said, like the, yeah. the, the fast pace that the song is in, mm-hmm. like that's followed in a lot of other songs that I have listened to mm-hmm. um, probably by some some similar bands like maybe Simple Plan or something. Mm-hmm. And um, then Dracolina has a good catch with the uh, and mm-hmm. yeah and I don't know in Dracolina he also um, has this different pitch with his voice like which he doesn't. Yeah, uh, his sure voice does the, sound different. Yeah, I mean, in the others, he, his voice is heavy. While in Dracolina, he when yeah. he sings Dracolina, he's like calling out to Dracolina, like Dracula. letting her know, like, yeah, you, you're the you're the bad influence. Dracula. Like he's making yeah. sure she hears it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, Dorothy, I liked after. I mean, I I liked Dorothy's tune because uh, mm-hmm. it felt a little personal in the first listen as well, but. When I got to know the story, mm-hmm. it felt like okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, you can sort of I'm empathizing with the, yeah. with the uh, band itself because she was a friend of the band. I liked Fine, yeah. and yeah, those are the songs I liked. The songs that made me mm-hmm. think, why is Plunkett making me listen to this? Is um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> is lead poisoning. Um, yeah. Well, not that I didn't want to listen to it, but then I didn't want to listen to it over and over. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> um. Then there is Kick Rocks, mm-hmm. and uh, at some points, this addiction, the the album version, not the mm-hmm. acoustic one. The acoustic yeah. ones. I mean, all the acoustic ones. I was good yeah. to go with. I, I was happy to listen. Interesting. To them. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's more about the punk rock sound than anything, right? Yeah. Rather than like the melody or the writing, it's that heavy punk rock. So I can't wait to make you dive yeah, deeper good Charlotte. into the abyss of punk rock. Good Charlotte. 
we'll see. Um, but you know, for me, like when when I originally heard, uh, to me in this album, like when I first heard it, right, uh, there were some songs that stood out to me, and I kind of made a playlist of those songs that I just listened to over and over. Mm -hmm. And to me, that included uh, uh, "Dine, Dine, My Darling," "Dead mm -hmm. on the Floor," both the main track and the acoustic versions, "The American Screen," "Off the Map," "Eating Me Alive," and "Fine." But like the standouts were fine because like. Fine to me, it was. It just felt like a. Like I don't even know how to. I know how to put it. It's just the writing and everything, right? Sometimes you just connect with it, mm -hmm. and I think the way it was written and that sort of I don't know sarcastic tone he has, um, mm -hmm. just really appreciated it. To me, it stood out from all the other sort of punk rock type songs out there, and uh, off the map, same way the writing, uh, and the way it's written to me stood out. Right. Dead on the floor, I just. Especially the acoustic version, the music and the rhythm, and even the normal version, the drumming mm -hmm. really stood out. Um, while "Dying, Dying, My Darling," it, to me, it was just I just had fun with it. Um, it was just a song that, like, the rhythm and everything to me was like very punk rockish in terms of like it's about death, it's like gothic, but the music and everything is so uplifting. It just worked really well. It was like a sarcastic gothic song, <laughs> right? Um, but I think overall, I really do think the writing, the way they write it is very smart. Like they, yeah. you know, it's not just poetic. It's not just straightforward surface level. They do play around. They're good with words. Right. And they've connected it well with, um, as, as they mentioned, like all the songs have stories attached to them and to each one of them. So like it connects well with uh, or well to a point you can imagine their perspective or their you know yeah they, they're putting things in this one light which you can see and yeah that makes sense i mean no yeah for example the song yeah. dorothy yeah I mean, and it's very personal to them as well, right? I think some of the songs mm -hmm. they've just written based on their experience as opposed to like, oh, people are going to love this. Um, and, you know, I think when songs are written like that is when they become very relatable. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I think to me it's it's very interesting. I mean, Alkaline Trio there, I, I, I listen to punk rock, a lot of different bands, uh, but they really do stand out. And I think a lot of their other albums as well. But to me, this one... Particularly, it was very mixed when it when it came out in terms of the the actual like reception of it, um, and maybe people I I feel like maybe they were too biased by the previous sound because I wasn't as much. I had just heard Crimson and some of the other tracks, and this yeah. had just come out, so I started hearing this. Mm -hmm. But it was just such a fresh sound. Like all the tracks have like most of them at least have a very uplifting sound, while they're about the, you know, the topics are not as uplifting, but. Mm -hmm. That whole combination to me just felt very whimsical. Um, and yeah, I think I suppose there we have it, guys. Uh, do you have anything else to add, Rosie? Or I think um, I'm ready to wrap this up. Yeah, I think we've we've wrapped it up. Uh, again, like just pointing out that I, I strongly feel that this is uh, a chapters of a relation of relationships. Yeah. Different of, relationships. Yeah, of different relationships. But uh, that's that kind of clearly is how it feels, except the few songs which are based on different stories, such as American Scream and uh, mm -hmm. Dorothy. But otherwise, Draculina is clearly that, and Dead on the Floor is another one. So Dying, Dying, My Darling is another one. So it's like you can't you can't put these yeah. songs in one relationship, but in the same relationship, they no. they are about oh, yeah, relationships. relationships. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in, guys, and we will see you next time with something completely radically different. <laughs> yep, we will. Cheers. Thank you.